Hello MechWarriors, this is Stuart, Strategos Level 3 and today we are going to be doing a MechHQ video but MechHQ video with a difference. So this video is all about using MechHQ as a aid, a GM aid for a pen and paper campaign. So not using Mega Mech at all, not playing online, not using um, the Mega Mech program to simulate Battletech, actually playing a Battletech game, but using Mech HQ as a GM aid to run a campaign ops uh, campaign. So something from the campaign ops book. As you can see in my background here, I've actually got the uh, new art from the Kickstarter here from the one of the campaign ops, a lovely archer in uh, Capellan Warrior House. Um, I can't remember which warrior house this is, one of the warrior houses here. And I'm not going to be showing any pictures of the rule book. You really need to have the rule book to hand, but I will be mentioning the page numbers. Here's my copy of the rule book as a PDF. I've got a physical copy as well, but I'll be going through and mentioning some of the page numbers, but not to infringe any copyright. I'm not going to uh, put up screenshots, but I'm, what I'm going to do is show you how to do this. And this is something that we've tested. I'm currently running a campaign, a company level campaign. Um, where I'm GMing that and it's all pen and paper and we are using MechHQ just to track the unit. So we're going to go to start a new campaign. Okay, so this is the uh, option we want. And the first thing we're going to get asked is select a preset. And we're going to select the campaign operations preset. So a lot of this allows us to basically use um, MegaMech Oh, sorry, Mech HQ without any of the automated options. But we'll also go through the options and show you what options you can tweak in this first video. I'm going to set a date. So you can set any date you want. That's really important because it limits what availability equipment is. I'm going to set the date uh, to be what we're using for my campaign at the moment, which is 3028, the beginning of the fourth succession war. Okay, and we can even pick a particular date here, such as August 28th, which was actually, I think, almost the date when the uh, Lyran Alliance first invaded the Draconis Combine. So now we get the campaign options screen. And so this has got lots of different things here. I'm going to go through them all one by one to just generally uh, say what they do. A lot of these things you won't need to change. Okay, uh, some of them you might, so we'll go through them. So general screen here, we can put our name of our, our campaign group. So I'm going to call it uh, Morning Star. Oh, my keyboard's not working. Give me a second. Morning Star Securities. This is the name of our group. We can choose a faction. Uh, we're using rating system in campaign ops, which is in the book. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about this at the moment. The uh, camo the unit icon, you can choose anything you want. Uh, you can even upload a GIF file. Um, I'm just going to choose this for the time being. And you can choose a camo if you want, but it's not really that important because we are not uh, going to be playing inside the game. So we won't really see that anyway, okay? But you would if you were playing online. But we're not going to do that. We'll be playing on uh, with uh, pen and paper and dice. So repair and maintenance. So this is a, a, a important part. Now, one thing to say that we do with maintenance is we don't get Mega Mech to do the maintenance roles for us. The Mega Mech can only do maintenance in one way. The way it does maintenance is it does maintenance by rolling for every component um, in one seven day period. Now, we actually found that that's actually quite hard to manage and we actually prefer the rules that are, the basic rules that are in campaign ops, which is to make rolls, make one roll per mech, and then that modifies the quality. So we're gonna turn maintenance off, okay? And you can even decide not to have maintenance in your campaign and make it optional, because maintenance is a is a is a pain it is it, it it basically does it adds more difficulty to the game because things start to go wrong 
Use error mods for repair rolls. This is quite a good option to actually attach. This makes certain repair rolls more difficult if you are operating in different errors. So for instance, in the second in the fourth succession war, you get an automatic plus two to that roll. It makes it harder as opposed to operating in the in the uh, kind of like height of this star league when you get plus zero. Uh, so this changes over time. Um, the rest of these things, we, we can use them or not use them. I'm going to put use quirks so that things like um, rugged, not rugged actually, it wouldn't matter, but some of the, the quirks that are involved in campaigns actually get applied here. Some of them you might have to do manually, but we're not going to be playing the game using quirks, but they, some of the quirks actually apply to repairs or to buying units. Um, we've got... Damage destroy parts by a margin of, fail margin of failure of four. So this is a, a good one to put down if you want to make it a bit more difficult. For instance, uh, whenever you make a, a roll to repair a part, but it's not in the main rule, so I'm going to leave that one out. Supplies and acquisition. Now this depends on how you want to play your game, if you want just a GM to run this, but we're going to leave this basically as it is, where we can acquire parts with a waiting period of seven days using an acquisition skill of not tech, but administration, because that's the way it is in the in the rules. Um, support personnel can make acquisition checks. Uh, we're not going to worry about the penalty for clan equipment, um, but actually I will put it in here, but because we're not having clans, but I'm going to put that to plus three because that's the penalty for clan equipment. Um, if you are doing it in, uh, say, 3050. Um, and delivery time we're leaving uh, as, as it is 1d6 uh, months. It's not exactly the same as it is in campaign in campaign ops, but it, it works, so it's quite well. We'll leave the planetary acquisitions off. Uh, that's a different system. We're just going to use this general acquisition roles. Tech limits. Okay, so limit units by tech by year. That's good. Uh, allow the purchasing of clan parts. It's on, but it doesn't matter because our time period, there aren't any clan parts. Um, but I could turn that off if I want to make sure that there's no clan parts available. Allow, And you can always go back and change these later. These aren't set in stone. You can change them. Allow the purchasing of sphere parts. Allow only cannon units for purchase. I'm going to put that on here. Okay, you don't have to, but this means that uh, any non-canon units that get added or uh, that aren't official won't come up um, only allow canon variants as refit kits so this is quite good where basically you can say i'll only allow it to have a reef an official refit kit of a shadow hawk 2h to a 2d for instance maximum tech level you can set what tech level you want to use from different books i'm going to leave that as advanced I think because that will allow me to have all of the kind of standard mechs but also I could just put it up to one official which is the maximum and that would allow me everything uh, in, so one of the key things here is for instance standard rules would mean just stuff in total warfare advanced rules would mean things in tac ops like uh, artillery um, so you can't get artillery without that being on advanced so that's quite important if you want if you want to have artillery units available uh, faction intro dates quite useful because different if you want to play a, a campaign that's official and you want to basically play within a certain area you don't want to pick uh, equipment that you can't have um, and I think that's it um, this one's actually quite good use ammo type by uh, unofficial um, by type unofficial because this allows you to mix sizes of packs so for instance an lrm 10 can be used for lrm 20s i'm gonna leave that turned off though but that can be quite good you could argue actually that these uh, lrms come in pre-set cassettes you know of 10 and they can't be swapped from one thing to another personnel is a big one okay so there's lots of different things in here and most of these we're not actually going to use because they will only be used in game and we're not actually playing the game online. I'm going to expand this to make it a bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to go over to this side. So it says track time in service, which is quite good because you, you just get a record of how long your Mac Warriors have been there. Track time in ranks, track total earnings, track total experience points. They're all useful because they just add that little bits that you're, you're kind of, you have a dossier for your Mac Warriors and it lets them know 
how long they've been doing things. You've got some different XP rules here, which I'm not going to use, and some different medical rules, which I'm not going to use. Um, I'm just going to use the standard ones that are in that are in uh, campaign ops. Uh, you've got prisoners here, which again we're not going to use because we're not going to do automatic prisoners. You, there are actually ways you can add prisoners in manually, so that's quite interesting. Again, all the rest of these things are mainly to do with uh, playing the game um, online, so using tactics, using toughness, using edge. Um, we don't have to worry about any of that. Finances. This is quite an important one because we will be using this. Pay for parts. So basically, if you buy parts, that's fine. Pay for repairs. That uh, in campaign ops, page 46, it said their repairs because 20% of the price list. So actually, I'm going to turn that on. I don't know why it's not on as default, really, because that's one of the rules. Pay for new units. It's obvious. Pay for personnel salaries. That's worked out by TAC, op, by, uh, TAC ops. Pay for overhead expenses is a legacy rule. You could put it in there, but it's in it's in from um, Field Manual Mercs, and it's 5% of monthly salary. Uh, but I'm going to leave it off because it's not in Campaign Ops. But if you want to use some of the legacy rules from uh, Field Manual Mercenaries, you can do. Um, it's, it's quite good different uh, rules in there. Uh, pay for unit maintenance. Okay, we're going to turn that off because it's not actually a rule within... Uh, campaign ops uh, so I'm going to turn it off pay for transportation I am going to turn on because again it is a rule uh, even though it can come out quite expensive uh, allow but you can override this for GM reasons uh, or you can just say for contracts that your your um when, we, when we're doing the contract section that the um, employer is paying all the transportation allow selling of units which is good allow selling of parts pay for personnel recruitment now this isn't actually in campaign ops as the rules uh, it's in the um, field manual mercenaries and it costs you two months salary as an initial down payment it's quite a good rule actually but i'm not going to include it but you could add that it's, it's, it's a nice rule to add uh, we've got things about loans limit loans uh, parameters by unit rating Okay, this is in uh, Intel Ops, which is a different book, so we're not using that. Use percentage-based maintenance costs. Again, not going to use that one. Infantry don't count to contract pay. Um, not going to use that one. Uh, use campaign uh, operations, peacetime operating costs. That's an official campaign rule. Okay, and again, it's exactly how it's laid out in, um, in campaign ops. So paying for uh, ammunition that you might use as part of training. Use expended spare part modifiers for campaign ops page uh, 14. So this is going to be involving using modifiers for quality, I think. So I'm going to turn this one on. Breakdown peacetime cost to core costs. That displays a breakdown peacetime cost in the daily log, which I think is a quite good one to do, actually. So I'm going to turn that one on. Financial year duration annual. Leave that one on there. We can export it if we want, but I'm not going to. The rest of the stuff I'm going to leave uh, alone because it doesn't really need to change this mercenaries this is the important one this one um, normally your contracts that you get paid is worked out as on, on a certain percentage of your total uh, cost of all of your units added together so usually it's a five percent the dropship percentage if you want to use dropships you can the dropship percentage is actually one Okay, so if you basically want to have a dropship and put a dropship in your squad, which you don't have to, um, dropships are really, really expensive, and that will affect the total amount of money that you get. One option is to completely exclude the idea of dropships and set this to zero, so you never have to worry. And the other idea is to set this to one with the assumption that dropships will actually be part of your campaign, so they might land, they might get attacked, and different things. I'm going to set it to one because that's what it says in campaign ops. But you, but campaign ops also says that you may decide that dropships aren't going to form a part of your mission. It will make the um, campaign operations contracts a lot more if you basically allow that. But then dropships are expensive, and you have to maintain them as well, so they do cost a lot to maintain. Experience is a big one now. In the uh, campaign, it's a bit 
kind of vague on different experience levels. You get one XP for each completed scenario, but I kind of like to monkey with this a bit. So for instance, I like to add one XP for every kill. And there is a way of logging kills in this, so you can actually have, have a kill log. Uh, one XP for every 25 successful tasks is very good for your technician, so this is a good one to keep. One XP for a roll of a 12, and one XP for a roll of a two, you learn from your mistakes and you learn from your successes. This is a good one to keep. Again, it ensures that you're actually getting XP for your technicians. Uh, one XP for every two active months. So this is great for garrisons. If you are planning to have a garrison duty, you can do that. Uh, XP for selective negotiator for a new contract. So your admin people can get this. Administrators won't get XP really if you unless you're using them. So we actually tend to award one XP awarded for each administrator on each Monday of the previous, and we're going to say four weeks because I'm going to kind of base this idea on the idea of our, our maintenance period is one month. Now that's an interesting thing. Maintenance periods should they be one month or one week? And the answer is they can be both. Uh, usually if you are in peacetime, uh, you're doing a garrison scenario, you would make the maintenance cycle once a month. Um, and if you are doing a wartime scenario, so you're in the middle of an evasion, you might do an encounter once every week. So that can change. Uh, one XP cost for every uh, edge point. We're not going to have edge points because edge points aren't part of the rules. Uh, edge points, by the way, you could include them as well. It's a great rule. I think it's actually a rule in um, in a time of war, but at each edge point, so I'll leave it there actually. So each edge point allows you to make one reroll or to avoid to make a reroll, for instance, if uh, someone gets a head hit on you. Okay, so it's a kind of a saving grace point, but I'll leave it there. Skills, we're not going to monkey with at all. Um, don't really look at that because it just changes what the basic skills are. SPAs, you can keep or you could not because you can just record these on pen and paper they don't really affect the game that much from a point of view of um, uh, the maintenance skill randomization um, I'm going to turn off extra randomness so it stays the same as a as in the book for for determining so in total warfare you've got a table uh, which tells you what the chances are of getting uh, different things. And here, here's the table basically from Total Warfare. And you can basically use this to, to work out what level, and this isn't a, what level of experience you roll your mech warriors up to be. Uh, you don't have to roll mech warriors, and we'll talk about that next video. You can, you can select them and you can give them the skills you want. If you're rolling them randomly, it's quite worth Check monkeying with this because it makes it quite fun. So you've got every mech warrior has a chance of an artillery skill, 10%. Um, and then they roll on the table with a minus two bonus. They roll 2d6 minus two to work out how good they are at that. Secondary skills, I think it's well worth setting that. This is like a second job. So I like setting that to like 20%. You could even change the minus four bonus to minus two. And this will give everyone a little bit of an extra second job. And it's worth, I think it's worth changing this. And you, you get some fun randomness here. Again, you don't need to do it randomly. We'll show you that when we get to that part, that video, which will be the next video of creating uh, the um, creating your company. Uh, a tactic skill, again, is, is actually important because tactic skill is on the, um, is part of the tac ops rules. Uh, special abilities and small arms. Small arms again is like your firearm skill, so that's really good. Okay. Ranking system. Ranking system, how do you want to rank your things? Well, I'm going to rank them in the normal second star league defense force, which basically just is the normal kind of everyday way. You can rank them if you're a Lyran Alliance affiliated mercenary group and you want to use Lyran Alliance affiliated ranks. It doesn't really matter too much. Name and portrait generator. Um, for fun, I'm going to click all roles so that everyone gets a picture. Uh, use origin faction for assigned names is good. 
uh, markets. Um, again, we're using the strategic operation rules to generate the uh, markets for basically when personnel appear that you can you can do or you can you can do this with your GM doing it. You don't have to let the system do it. Random assignment tables, we're not, it's not really important for this. And against the bot is turned off because we're not doing anything with the bot. Uh, the last thing I forgot actually to mention in personnel, right down here, it's right down at the bottom if I can find it. You've got about marriages, which are interesting. You can get manual marriages. Um, you can also get it to randomly calculate chances of offspring. Um, you can use random marriages as well um, that just just happen. Uh, but one of the most useful things is, if I can find it, is the random origin. So a randomized origin allows you to basically randomize the planet which we, the which your macquarias come from. And we're going to randomize origin for dependence. And you can choose a particular area. So say your pink are coming from a particular like the Lara and Commonwealth. You could do, choose a particular planet to randomize around or not. They can just come from anywhere in the inner sphere. Um, so just for fun, I'm going to say that we're going to randomize them around. Uh, it might say... Uh, Tamar. Okay, so we're all going to live near Tamar. Find T. There we go. And we can say quite a large area. We can say randomized origin radius in light years. We're going to say uh, for 220 light years around. Uh, you can have clan origin uh, for non-clan factions. If you're doing a campaign in 3150 or in four, you could have you could have clan origins. Uh, extra random planetary origin. Okay, randomized origin is randomized to planetary level when selected, so you could basically find what, what planet within the system you can have. Let's turn that on for fun. Uh, relationships, you can look at the level of relationships it tracks. So I'm going to go all the way to aunts, uncles, and cousins. So can you do all of the relationships? So that's basically it. So I've done, and you, you can look at these options a bit more, but those are good ones to change. And... Um, what I'll see if I can do is I'll see if I can do a saved uh, preset for people to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that because you can actually save presets. Uh, so I'm going to confirm that and we're going to launch into the game. And here we are. It is Thursday, August 28th, 3028. And with that, I'm going to leave this first video here. So we have basically just started the game, set up the options. And our next video is going to be creating a mech warrior, uh, creating mech warriors and purchasing equipment and setting up a small uh, lance based company uh, ready to play on the tabletop.